Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about whether or not boosting a post on your phone is as good as using Ads Manager on desktop. There's actually five different areas that they differ that we're gonna be talking about today. And understanding those differences will let you know when it actually might be a better idea to just boost the post on your phone because there actually are certain scenarios where doing so might even be better than Ads Manager. I will let you know in most scenarios, Ads Manager might be a better bet, but from you understanding the five keys that we're gonna be talking about today, then you should be able to completely make the decision for yourself moving forward. Make sure you're subscribed too. If you're new to the channel, my name's Derek Vidal. I'm the founder of socialbamboo.com. You can also catch this podcast on the road if you ever want to. Otherwise, subscribes are much appreciated. I'm going to 100K subscribers with or without you. So if you want to be in the first 100K, then you know what to do. Smash the bell too so you know when new videos come out, which is about once or twice a week right now. Lots of content to enjoy. So let's get into today's video. Starting in Ads Manager, the first option you're going to get when you run an ad on either location is selecting a campaign objective. And on Ads Manager, you have 11 different options here. On the phone, you have three different options. You have more profile visits, more website views, or more messages. Now, as far as I know, this is not like declared on Instagram's website, but I'm pretty damn positive this is accurate. If you do more website visits, it's gonna be the same as a traffic campaign, more profile visits, it's engagement, and if you do more messages, it's messages. So if you would want to run a campaign outside of those three, then that right there will always make you want to use Ads Manager instead. And a lot of campaigns that you're going to be doing are conversions campaigns. That's going to be if you're collecting leads or sales, you're gonna to wanna to be doing conversions. So if you're doing a lead opt-in for a free resource, absolutely want to do ads manager use the conversions campaign and if you're going for purchases facebook is really good at knowing who is actually in the market to purchase and when you run a traffic campaign all it's trying to do is try to get people to visit your website for the cheapest cost possible is what that means and the cheapest people to advertise to are the ones that no one else is advertising to so in order to do that, they're usually not running ads to people who buy things online often or opt themselves into very many funnels, and they're just not a very active online sh shopper. You know, maybe they're just very active online with being on social media all day and clicking every link, but it's just going to find those people with no respect to if they are actually a quality customer. So that's why it's also, uh, it's always going to be very difficult to get sales from promoting a post on the app. The next thing we're going to get into is at the ad set level when you're choosing an audience. So when you promote a post, you get four options, gender, age, location, and interest. And when you do it on Ads Manager, you get a few more options, including language, but the biggest option is perhaps just with the interest-based targeting. So if I was doing it on the phone and I wanted to sell yoga pants, the way that I could do so is I could select the audience yoga or yoga pants. And by doing so, it would make it so my promoted post would go out to people who are interested in yoga or yoga pants. It sounds like they're the same, right? Uh, there's probably a lot of overlap there. But for that reason, if we want to find a more active segment of the audience, what we can do in Ads Manager is I would click yoga and then I would click on this button that says define further. Literally five minutes ago when I was recording the first version of this, it said narrow audience. So just know that that button changes all the time. It will say either define further or narrow audience. But let's say I choose yoga pants. So the audience right now in yoga is 4 million. And if I do end yoga pants, it goes down to 1.8 million. So rather than running it to yoga people interested in yoga or yoga pants, I can say they have to be interested in both. And what that means, because it sounds like they're the same, right? They've just showed enough interest to Facebook and Instagram on both levels to qualify, which means that they're a more active participant in that audience. This is going to be, you know, this 1.8 million people is going to be the 50% of that yoga audience before that is a lot more active and actively buying things, especially yoga pants. So this is going to make it a lot easier to actually get sales. The third thing we're going to go into is the actual placements. So when you boost a post on Instagram or Facebook, it's just going to put it to the respective feed. If you do it in here, you can see that you can put it in the video feeds, the right column, the explore page, the shop, 
stories. There's going to be a lot more options with placements. And the more different locations you allow them to run your ad, the more potential they have to find you some good deals on leads and sales and conversions because there's just more people uh, for them to choose from. If that person is watching it, stories all day, like your quality customers just won't get off stories and they have not been on the shop or the, the feed that day, then running a story ad might be able to to find them when when you need to, right? So just having more options of where your ad can show can drive down ad costs. The next thing we're going to get into is this thing at the bottom called the attribution setting. So there's four options, one day click, seven day click, one day click review, seven day click or one day view. I'm not gonna give you the details of all four so we can just stick to the main topic today, but I'm just gonna give you the difference between one day and seven day. Essentially what this means is from the time someone sees your ad, Facebook is asking how long does it typically take for them to convert to whatever conversion you're going for. So if you're going for a sale, let's say, that would be something that you would want to run a seven day window on because from the time someone sees your ad, it wouldn't be weird if they needed to see your ad multiple times that week before they actually buy. If you're running a lead campaign for like a free resource or a giveaway, Usually someone only needs to see that ad one or two times before they actually act on it. So setting a one day attribution setting is better because if they've seen your ad four or five days in a row and they still haven't taken you up on your free thing, then you would want the uh, ads to, to turn off to those people and prioritize showing to others who hadn't seen it yet. So that is the other simple division. And when you run it on your phone, you're not gonna see this option, but I'm pretty positive it's just setting it at a one day click because it's trying to get you followers. It's trying to get you likes or it's trying to get people to simply click on your website, not do anything on your website after that, like buy or add to cart, but to simply click on it. So it's gonna have it as a one day click. So again, if you're selling products, it's not gonna work doing it from promoting the post because they're gonna need to see that ad multiple times and it's not going to show it like that. It's just gonna show it to as many people as it can one or two times. So moving on to the last thing, is at the ads tab and this is the ability to split test your ad so i've got a company's ads that i'm running right now they're they're currently off today that this is the first day that they're off the ad campaign yet ended yesterday actually but you can see here i've got lots of different ads and for how they're titled it says content a caption a content e caption a content D, caption B, content A, caption B, content E, caption B. Hopefully that makes sense just in reading the title of what the differences of these ads are. I have five different versions of the content and two different versions of the caption and then every variable testing in between. And this is something you can't do on the phone, yet it's also pretty necessary to really get your ads dialed in because being a good marketer is about understanding that your first guess at marketing is probably not going to be your best guess. A lot of times, uh, even though it, it didn't this time, content A actually ended up winning. Content A, caption A, won in this one. That never happened. So this is like the worst example I could possibly give. But usually, it is not my first guess as to how to run that ad that is the best one. And it also is just reassuring. If it ends up being that one, you can at least know, hey, I, I ran some ad, some tests to these other variations for the first couple of days to see if it would beat it out, and it didn't. The ability to test these different ideas you have of how to pitch your product and then see which one ultimately wins is the only way to actually find out which advertising works the best and to know that you're running the best ads. Now, just so you know too, these ads don't appear on your organic feed on Instagram. Um, so when you run ads, it's just gonna show to the people you say to from your account, but if they would go to your page, they're not gonna see all five of these different variations with all the different captions and everything. Uh, only if you would actually post this organically would it display on your feed. Just a question a lot of people has, have asked me is they're like, all right, if I do all these split tests, I'm gonna have like all these posts on my feed. And that's just the, the other benefit of Ads Manager is that it doesn't have to be on your organic feed to test it out to a cold audience. I hope this video more than answers your question. And as far as how I can help you out from here, I'm gonna point you to two different videos. For those of you looking to really just gain followers, you don't need to use Ads Manager. You just need to have a boosting your post strategy. It's not as simple as just boosting your post, but I've got a video that I will link right here. 
and that is on how to gain followers from promoting posts. And it is not as simple as just promoting the post. There really is a strategy to it. So make sure you check that out if you want to do it the right way because I've had posts gain over a thousand followers doing this exact strategy, but it is a, um, you know, a very specific verbiage that you have to use in order for it to work. So check that out if you want more followers. And then for those of you who are ready to get sales, check out this other video that I will link on how to run your first Instagram ad campaign using a giveaway as the vehicle. It might sound like, oh, a giveaway, I've done that before. I promise you this is not a giveaway like you've run before, but it's a very effective giveaway combined with a sales strategy and it's a very uh, profitable sales process and it builds your following very quickly as well. So uh, for those of you ready for sales, check out that video instead and then make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get in the loop of all new videos I come out with. There should be about one or two a week from here until I hit 100,000 subscribers or more. So again, I'm not going anywhere. You can subscribe now or subscribe later. Might as well subscribe now. You can always unsubscribe later, but I appreciate it and I'll talk to you next time.